Hello everyone and welcome back to Closets Gaming. Today we are going to take a look at Narita Boy. This retro stylized platformer metroidvania set inside a world of computers promises to stun you with its gorgeous pixel art, awesome combat, and with dangerous bosses and a great soundtrack. Narita Boy is available on Steam for 24 euros and 99 cents, your regional equivalent. For some reason, the digital world keeps stirring up our fantasies. You just see it in your head. A world made from wires, neon lights, ones and zeros. All the blinking lights, pixel beings walking around. Doesn't it just sound amazing? Well, it doesn't matter, because no matter how the digital world looks in your head, you'll get to see it for yourselves and read a boy. The world needs a hero. Yes, again. It's one of the oldest cliches and we all saved the world so, so many times. But at least, this time, it's the digital world. The digital world suffers under an evil program called HIM that wishes to see the digital world destroyed. What will HIM do after it's destroyed? Who cares? The important part is we found a hero. Narita Boy. At the start, he's quite simple. All he can do is run and maybe do a bit of jumping. But at the end of his journey, he will become a merciless killing machine that won't be scared by any app. The story isn't anything special as you probably understand at this point. It's a story we've seen a million times before and was just taken into the world of ones and zeros. But it does have some beauty. Especially the environment that just isn't only purely scenery, but provides plenty of places to ask questions and search for answers. It's kind of sci-fi, but I just had these little hints of fantasy hidden inside. The weapons, your powers, it all seems to come more from fantasy rather than sci-fi. And I really like the way these two genres intermingle, and it all makes, makes you feel like Narita Boy is Sir Lancelot and only the round table is much more pixelated. The most hidden parts of the lore, such as its creation or who the creator himself is, come through his memories. These almost spiritual dreams are the only place of respite when they get to take a break from the otherwise never-ending action. But not always will these visits be fun and happy. Nonetheless, these flashbacks will allow you to understand the motive of the creator. So, that's the story. What about the action? I'm actually very glad that the part of many metroidvanias where we have to constantly collect items just, just reduced to a minimum. Instead, you'll just be searching for keys that look like a floppy disk. They just take you to the right door or right person and then you can progress. But that still means that you will do plenty of backtracing, but at this point, I think people who play Metroidvanias just expect that. The only real problem with this lies in the fact that a digital world is one in which you can easily get lost. The location do have names, but they just aren't distinct enough to easily remember where you're supposed to go. Luckily, all of this is more than redeemed with the combat. This is one hell of a good combat system. Don't expect the complexity of Diablo, but you will get a great combat system full of combos. Over time, Narita Boy will learn a large set of moves and attacks that you'll actually need a cheat sheet to remember them all. And the best thing? The game actually forces you to switch your attacks because there are enemies that need a certain attack to be destroyed. For example, there's a knight with a shield that first needs to have his shield destroyed with a heavy shoulder attack and only then you can kill him with your sword. Then, whenever you get overwhelmed and you can't handle the enemies purely with your sword, it is time to use one of your abilities. Shoot a laser beam or burn your enemies with your fire attack. The skills are visually more than stunning and if you use them correctly, it's going to be literally a massacre. But these specials will mostly be used in fights with the bosses. 
The bosses are the true spice of the game, but compared to many other metrovanias, the bosses here are a bit easier. The attacks are a bit easier to read, not that cruel, and they don't do that much damage. But this can either be considered a good thing for those who prefer medium difficulty, or a bad thing for the hardcore fans. And the last thing I need to talk about are the 80s. Because Narita Boy truly wants to exist in the 80s. Well, no. It brings them back whenever possible. The environment, the hero, the soundtrack, which by the way, is great and available separately on Steam and should be bought by you. Everything just makes you think of the 80s. So, in conclusion, the style and the combat of Narita Boy are truly amazing. The adventure part is good too, but it does need a little time to draw you into the digital world. So if you're on the lookout for a good metroidvania and you don't care that it isn't the hardest one ever, then an Arita Boy will certainly be quite fun. So that's it for today guys, I hope you liked the review and if you do please consider giving it a like here on YouTube, perhaps even subscribe to the channel and yeah be sure to share it with your friends because yeah it really does help. And yeah, leave a comment if you have anything you would like to add. See you guys later with more gaming content.